So a lot of people have been asking me, will you ever go back to Colombia? So I want to address something real quick. A lot of people say that I've lied about Colombia in order to sell my course. And every time I see that comment, it always bugs the heck out of me because I feel like compared to a lot of the other Colombian YouTubers, most of them don't even really speak Spanish or care to travel to the country to really know what it's like. So that's why I made my course in a way where it talks about all the good and the bad things about Colombia. I'm not trying to just sell you guys a dream. You guys have to understand all the cultural and society issues that the country has, all the safety issues that it comes with. Unfortunately, because all the content portraying Colombia in a certain light has led to a wave of sex pads and men looking for women coming into the country. I'm just gonna keep it a buck, right? That's exactly what it is. I've done my best to portray Colombia in a light that does not sexualize the women, but we all know the type of content that gets views and clicks. And I never wanted to sacrifice the integrity of my channel in order to pursue that. It really frustrates me when people are telling me that you're the reason why all these Asians are getting killed in Colombia, as if I'm the guy telling everybody to move to Colombia. I feel like I'm doing the complete opposite. I'm trying to warn people. So that's why I have my course available. People are going to do what they want to do anyways. So I would rather them be totally informed of the reality of what the country is rather than buying into a dream, which all of these other YouTubers are trying to sell you guys. You know, I get a lot of negative comments. That's fine. You disagree with me, all that stuff. One thing I can never stand are attacks against my integrity. So I felt like I had to say something about that. The biggest concern right now for me are the safety issues. When I was younger, I had a higher tolerance of it. As you grow up, and especially after getting married, it really makes you rethink everything having to do with safety. I thought I could handle it, you know, coming in, I was quite naive and growing up in the suburbs of LA, I thought that, hey, you know, I've traveled a lot, but I think I could have the street smarts to survive in a place like Colombia. It always bugs the heck out of me when specific YouTubers like to claim Safety in Colombia is not a big deal. And they compare safety in Colombia to safety in Baltimore or safety in Chicago. Both things can be true at once. Both places can suck at the same time. Just because one is bad doesn't negate that the other is bad. I always thought that that was a really dumb argument. It's because of the understating of how dangerous that place is. People find themselves in really crazy situations. Just in the last week alone, there were five foreigners that died in Medellin, bro. Five. The way that I always like to compare it is, is like Russian roulette. The chances of something happening to you, I guess, are quite low relatively depending on how you act. But if something does happen to you, the consequences can be super dangerous. You could lose your life, they can rob you a bunch of money, you can get drugged. It's just like a, always a low level threat that you're always concerned about. Do you think uh, Medellin is a uh, dangerous Seguro. Sí. Seguro no, peligroso demasiado, bastante. Es muy normal que las personas acá siempre tengan en su cabeza y no saques ese celular acá hasta ahora y guardarlo, eh. Yeah, sí. eh. Maybe there's some people that are used to that that can live in those environments over a long period of time that definitely gets to you. I also don't think the women are worth it anymore, you know. Everybody talks about the women this, women that. I swear I'm seeing the same girls in all these different videos, man. Colombian women are some of the sexiest in the world. But if you have something to lose, I feel like the risk is way too Hi. After traveling the world, I see beautiful women in Asia. I've seen a lot of beautiful women here in Poland. And I always found it funny that a lot of men complain about American women, saying that their standards are so high. They just want a man for their money or X, Y, and Z. And then they come to Colombia looking for a cheap sugar baby, leave with their money and do the exact same thing that they're complaining about. To me, it's like, if you're looking for true love, I won't fault you for that. Then why come to Colombia and then leave with your wallet and then try to deal with girls who are way out of your league, not knowing the culture, not speaking any Spanish. It just makes me feel a type of wake. I know there's a bunch of YouTubers that do this. And that's why a lot of men who reach out to me in consultations or DMs have such a disillusioned view of Colombian women. There's a high number of single moms in Colombia the highest rate in all of the world at 84%. It's just like walking into a minefield and then hoping to find a diamond in the rough. Los noviazgos colombianos. Buenos, tóxicos, muy pegados, o refrescos, como es. <laughs> Yo diría que son tóxicos. Sí, ¿en qué sentido? En especial las mujeres son un poco locas. Un poco, un poco, un poco, un poco. <laughs> if you take away the women, what's really left? Really amazing sights to see really great people. I feel like you can get that same experiences in many places around the world. So when it comes to Colombia, a lot of people talk about how amazing the people are. I would agree to that statement to a certain extent. In a percentage, I would say that it's like the same. The men are bad and the men are good. 
En Colombia, 60% de la gente es buena, pero 40% es como es mala. Sí, más sí, o menos. Más o menos, sí, cierto, sí. sí. From my personal experience, I would say that that is true. Even when I was involved with this church, these people who were supposedly like Christian, when they were first getting to know me and they loved me, it was all about the love of God and Jesus. As soon as I became their enemy, then all of a sudden they were trying to extort me for money. They sent me all these lawsuits, all that love that they supposedly had, all of a sudden that all disappeared and they became like the ugly faced Colombians that we hear so much about. And on top of all that, I've had really bad experiences doing business. I had a really good experience with my employees with my restaurant though. And then when I sold my business to the ex-chef, I think he still owes me like 75 bucks, but it's not that big of a deal. Elephant Spanish school, I still highly recommend. I personally went to that school and I got fluent in six months. So I'm a personal testament to their school working if you guys are interested in learning Spanish. I also work with Mario Jose, the visa lawyer. We've done a lot of good business together. I also got scammed by the real estate company a couple times, actually. I also got scammed working with an immigration lawyer. The legal system in Colombia is also a giant mess. I had to take him to court and I ended up losing. There's nothing that's really orderly. It takes a bunch of time to get things done. I know that a lot of Colombians are trying to take advantage of foreigners. All these foreigners are coming and we're naive and we don't know how the culture is and we just want to help people. This is why we get taken advantage of so much. There's something about paisas. They are not afraid to step on other people in order to get ahead. Es que nosotros somos muy inteligentes para los negocios, muy berracos. Para un país hacer un buen negocio es tumbar al otro, es darle en la cabeza. Ya deja de ser honesto y pierde mucha, mucha tradición lo que ha sido la cultura siempre. Colombia is definitely getting a lot more expensive. Inflation has been quite crazy over the last few years. I remember the best time in Colombia was, I believe, the end of 2022. Peso was at 5,000. After December of 2022, all the prices started going up. Rent prices in Medellin specifically have like double or tripled since when I first arrived in 2020 because there's no real regulation on the market. And I don't even really blame the Colombians for this because if they know that they can get an apartment to a local and rent it for $600 or rent it out to a foreigner and rent it for $1,200, everybody would do that. It's a no-brainer. But because there's a lot of people who are scammers in Colombia as well, and you just saw this oversaturation in the real estate market and you couldn't trust if a listing was accurate or not. There was just so many problems that started coming up with the renting market and trying to find rent at a decent price. The currency in Colombia is not the most stable. Maybe now it's kind of leveled out at around 3.8, 3.9, but I remember there was a time where it shot up to five and then every single day it was different. I think the highest it got was like 5.2. There's just so many changes that happen in a shorter period of time, which is why it's hard for me to recommend people investing in that country right now. I'm saying all these things knowing that it's going to hurt my bottom line because I just want people to be informed. Colombia has also just changed a lot in the last few years. I know a lot of friends who went to visit Medellin in like 2017 or 2016 and they said they had a really amazing time. There were not a lot of foreigners there. It was quite safe. And I think because of the pandemic, everything was put on pause. So I got a pretty cool experience of Colombia, even though I think since the pandemic, things have gotten a lot less safe. But then once everything started opening back up and all these YouTubers were able to come back to Colombia, sexualizing the women, treating Colombia as their own personal whorehouse, it just started an influx of a bunch of sex pats and men searching for women, but not even like honestly searching for women. Prostitutes are very cheap and they are some of the hottest girls you'll ever see in your life. I think it's kind of a mix of both Colombian culture, how they portray their women, but also like the gringo coming in and partaking. If one is making the drug and the other one's taking the drug, who is really at fault? Because a lot of paisas will say the same thing about their women and view their women the same way. Oof, I know I'm gonna get a lot of heat for that one. <laughs> that one's a spicy take for sure. I felt like my channel and the content that I was making was definitely getting stale. The cap for Colombian YouTubers is probably Life with David. He's the one who's done the most successful here. It feels like a lot of his content is just kind of around the same thing. Walking around Medellin, dating in Medellin, bad thing happening in Medellin. Yes, it's definitely working for him. I just found myself running out of ideas. As soon as I left Colombia, I felt like my channel has taken off. I don't think Colombia is going to change. I actually think that there are more foreigners going there more than ever. Colombia is just in a weird place right now and maybe hopefully they can get out of it. As of right now, it's very hard for me to recommend people moving to specifically Medellin. I think the Eje Cafetero, Barranquilla, Santa Marta, some of the smaller cities are still worth visiting and maybe living in. I'm going to visit there. When I do, it's going to be a crazy homecoming. I know the videos are going to be crazy. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.